back on the field? Oh, man. You're like a high school guy in your first practice, you know. It's just a good feeling to be back out there doing football. Now, I'll, I'll be honest. We've been going Tuesday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning since February 3rd, 2nd, something like that. So we've been at it pretty good. And you know me, you know, one of my favorite things in coaching is the mat room. So we've been hitting that hard and getting the guys in decent shape. And the thing I felt good about today is that was not an easy practice. I like, oh, let's go no pads and go hang out. I mean, you you hung out, you know, you you, you were gonna you were gonna end up uh, being on the short end of the stick for sure. So, uh, you know, I thought, I thought our winter workouts prepared us for day one, and I think day one helps us because it, it uh, defined how we're going to go about our business on the practice field. What is this feeling of progress like right now compared to last spring? Yeah, it, it, too early. Um, but I will say this, I, again, I, I thought the give and take was, was uh, well, it, it's always an indicator. You know, if one unit's just flat out dominating the other, you know, that's probably not a good sign. Um, when there's give and take and there's things both units can walk away from and, and then go coach off the tape. And you know, I mean, the bottom line is there was a lot of scheme being thrown around out there. So, uh, you know, the bottom line is, uh, you know, we'll get better at handling that. You're really looking for energy, uh, guys running to the ball and uh, run. And, and I don't care if you're running as an offensive player or a defensive player, everybody's got to show up at the ball, you know, and, and either trying to get that one last block that springs the player or or to get, get around it and get a tag off and make a tackle. So those are the kinds of things that you're looking at in the early practices. You know what's funny? I did something a little different. Yesterday, I went back and watched the entire New Mexico State game that we opened with. Just to kind of, and it, it, it was funny some of the similarities um, in terms of the give and take and the and you know plays being made and on both sides so you know i thought it was a good uh, ended up being a good task at hand yeah you know we're bringing it we're bringing him along real slow and and being smart and uh you know i'm not a doctor i just do what they tell me to do so uh you know obviously um you know, we 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 we're taking all the precautions necessary to make sure we got a healthy uh, Fumacao. You know, come uh, come the fall. Well, I I uh, I you know the nice thing is with Tyson being down, Amar's getting work. You know, I thought he uh, he he's. he's just kind of going this way. Um, I'm excited about his development, and I like the man. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, the way he treats his teammates, the way he, they rally around him, and that's offense, defense, special teams, I think is a good thing. You know, so the leadership coming from our quarterback position by not only the first guy, the second guy is important as well. You know, Atwood, and another guy that's a, you know, that's providing that kind. Tyler Rudolph's providing that kind of leadership. So, you know, we've got a number of guys uh, doing that. But uh, yeah, I thought Mazzotti had a big play. I thought Isaiah Rutherford played like we expect Isaiah Rutherford to play. Uh, Jalen Hudson certainly, he was he 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 was around it in the pass rush stuff. Uh, Kofi Asari, who's a young guy from Darty High School in Worcester, he's now starting to show that he can rush the passer. Anthony Simpson and T.Y. both uh, had nice catches during the during the, the day. And you know, like I said, you know, you're in no pads and uh, you get velocity like we had 
um, guys taking care of one another, but at the same time playing fast, that's a, that's a good indicator of how your team's going to practice week to week. How healthy were you coming into practice? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, in terms of the, the, of the entire group, um, I think pretty healthy. In terms of a couple guys, and a couple guys that we recruited, that we knew we had to kind of get through the early stages of spring type practice. But again, remember that month of June now, it's not like, you know, get away from the players and all that. You, you do get your time to work with a football and, do, and to get better as a football player, but you can't play football. You, you know what I'm saying? So. It, it's a good thing because it, you know, it gives you a chance to get your guys better and, and them to get better at the scheme, at throwing, catching, you know, batting the ball down, all those things. So, you know, I think it's a good thing. For your schedule, when do you guys start hitting and how many times you're going to wear pads in spring and all that? Oh, we'll wear pads eight times. That's where we're allowed. Uh, will we tackle eight times? I think you said it. it all depends on your health. You know, we're not, we're not going to destroy our own team now. I mean, we're just not going to do that. However, you know, there's another scenario. Like I told you, I looked at the New Mexico game. I walked away from that game and I said, boy, we tackled well. You know, when you have some guys walking away and they're going, ah, you know, we didn't tackle worth a damn for an opener and this and that. I don't want that to be my team, and I don't want them talking about us in that respect. But, you know, you just have to use your head. But practice three, we'll do some, uh, you know, you can get a lot done in block progressions and block destructions up front and at the linebacker position and tight end position. So I think you can get a lot of work done without being on the ground. You know, usually if you, if you said to me, how do guys get hurt? It's when they're on the ground. You know, that's, that's, the, big, that's the big one is guys on the ground, now they're getting drilled, you know, that's a problem. If they're staying on their feet and you're coaching your defensive guys, tremendous posture, both hands on the inside hip. All right, now we're gonna go inside drill, which is, defending the inside runs, this is live. Play the whistle and play the short whistle. So, whoop, it's over, you know? And, uh, you know, I think we'll, we, we do a pretty good job of taking care of them, but we, we've, got to, we've got to make sure that we, uh, we, we come out of this thing with healthy quarterbacks ready to go when the time is right. Yes. Any initial thoughts on Ellis today? Yeah, I, I, I think he, uh, you know, he's a kind of one of those guys that you're glad he's on your team now. You know, so uh, I think there was good give and take there. Um, you know, but at the same time, I don't want to put it put undue pressure on Lake, but I, I really like the way he's, he's kind of going about it, and. Uh, Watson, too, you know, the big guy, six foot four, 209 pounds, who can move. That's a pretty exciting uh, guy to work with. And, uh, you know, he has talent as well. So, you know, we feel like we're going in the right direction for sure. The littlest guy, Rod, he's uh, five foot eight and a half, but he's a great nickel now. He can go over the slots and, and his hands are punt going 100 miles an hour. So, uh, you know, we feel good about feel good about those guys. I feel good about the receiver core. You know what? I I wish you guys would have come to, like we were doing our uh, uh, box drill. We call it. So, the receiver lines up in the middle of the box with a with a defensive back pressing him, and he's got a release right and left. And uh, I thought we did as good a job as you possibly can. You know, making that drills aggressive, 
making that drill challenging, but at the same time, like I said, everybody's staying on their feet and then competing. So that's kind of a good thing. There's always a lot of, a lot of talk about transition to the Mac coming up, still a season away. You have a yeah. Of on the schedule. How much is that in your mind during the spring ball, and how are you going to prepare differently for those future conference games? For the I'm going to tell you what I told the players. You know, obviously we're going to the Mac. Some of you guys won't even be here. Put your hand up. So all the guys that put their hand up, I said, you won't care what's going on other than being a, an interested alum. You just worry about taking care of your business right, right here and right now. Because, you know, we've got a, a certainly a healthy schedule uh, paced with three SEC teams. Uh, so obviously those are challenges that, you know, and, and the one thing you don't have to worry about, guys get up for those challenges. And, uh, you know, I feel, I feel really good about, you know, our preparation there. But, you know, the schedule itself, like you said, there's some, there's some uh, MAC teams there, so we're going to, you know, we'll, and we've been getting a jump. We open up with Eastern Michigan, play Miami of Ohio, you know, and on and on and on, and on. plus Liberty, don't forget them. You know, they were only 13 and 0. So, you know, I mean, obviously it's a healthy schedule, but it's, it's also one I think we can, we, we're gonna have to make our mark early and be playing, playing at a quality level early. So I think that's gonna be important because, you know, there's, there's obviously some great challenges there, but challenges that we, we should be up for, for without question. You know, I, 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 think, I think in today's college football, there's a lot of similarities that you're dealing with. Now, as a co defensive coordinator, you're going, well, they're a long zone, play action, screen team. Uh, they're a tight zone counter, meaning gap schemes, uh, and play action or, you know, dro drop back pass. Now, a lot of the, the drop back against us kind of goes away because everybody's worried about, oh, they're blitzing every down, you got to get the ball out and, you know. But at the same time, I, the similarities are the runs are very similar, which I think is a, is a nice transition for our running backs, our blockers at the perimeter, the offensive line, um, I think it's probably the most important thing is the quarterback's got it. You know, it's easy for those guys because, oh, that's like this. The word, of, the call of it may be different, but the structure is similar. So I think there's some of those things. Yes, personally know him. Uh, spent time with his, his, my wife and his wife are AFCWA connections. So that's how we got to know each other. But uh, you know, this is a guy that's been a head coach at the MAC level. This is a guy that knows, you know, you just, here's the thing. He's got a job to do, I got a job to do. And we've got 11 assistants that got a job to do. And we've got to provide direction, offense, defense, and special teams. And uh, obviously, Ben Albert with the special teams are important. And uh, so life is good. I don't know if I can tell you, but we, we got a kicker yesterday. So I don't think we can tell you that. But if you peek at Twitter, you might find it yourself. Yeah. What were those things you saw? Um, I saw, I saw, you know, there's six or seven throws that I, I really thought were, were extra special and were challenged, but the play was made. What a good feeling that is, knowing that you can 
throw it around a little bit and and uh, and have a chance for success. Um, I I think our run game will be very nice complement to our throw game. But yeah, you know, uh, you just you just want to see your guys go out. You know, they've been working since February second. Go out and and just let it rip and play ball. You know, and uh, when you go, you know, I told them today coming off the pro I said, we now look like a football team that knows how to practice, that knows the tempo, and that knows what to do to get us functioning. And e even though we've made an adjustment offensively, uh, obviously, you know, we, we made some plays and we're only going to get better on that side, and we're only going to get better on the defensive side. The one thing that I'll also add is if you look at us a year ago, our sack total for, that I'm used to, oh, that was unacceptable. And, uh, you know, it's been kind of showing up the month of February and into today. You know, I think we're going to be vastly improved there. You mentioned you mentioned the run game. How nice is it having Tehran back? I don't even want to say it, you know. But, yeah, you know, it's nice having him back. And he's a great kid, works hard, and he has talent. You know, I mean, the guy rushed for over 1,000 yards last year. Uh, the other guy, that DeRocher now, he's going to have a huge year. And it's nice when you've got two of them, you know. I, I actually think, you know, Jalen John is another guy who was with me at Arizona who I thought was really one of our better tailbacks when I was there in 2021. So getting him going, because he, he's fought the injury bug, he's now, you know, back on the practice field and, and functional. So that's a good thing. Yeah. How do you make sure that throughout the spring you are prepared to get off to a strong start? Well, uh, you better make sure that you set your game plan for that first. You know, last year, again, it was funny because, like, you know, you know, last year we played New Mexico State in the opener. Were we ready to play the opener? I think so. They won 10 games, and one of them wasn't us. You know what I'm saying? So my point is we were ready going to New Mexico at 118 degrees to play that game both physically, mentally, and football-wise. So, you know, I, I think that kind of makes a statement, but you've got to have your team ready to play in the opener, you know, because that one's on you, and that's the game where coaching can make the, you know, make the biggest difference. You know, once you're schemes out there on both sides, then, you know, it's out there. You know, they're going to prepare for you. You're going to prepare for them, whoever executes the best. But in your opener, you got a chance to make a difference as a coach. Well, T.Y. had a good play today. So I think, you know, he's on, and, and we were able to redshirt him, so that helps us. Simps is, uh, you know, a, a, a big key for us today. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on the new guys, but I, I think you're going to be uh, surprised as we move forward. Uh, they showed a little bit of, uh, what do you, what's the word? Youth. You know, tra you, know you travel to a new team, now you've got to learn the scheme. You know, and they're a month in. You know, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. But uh, all of those guys run and run pretty damn well. So that's a positive. I'll tell you the other thing yeah, I'm surprised you didn't hit me on. I think our offensive line is vastly ahead of where we were when I got here. And I'm not saying that to, you know, belittle anybody i'm just saying i think you know we've made strides there you know through our high school recruiting and through our portal recruiting and put it together and you know i think that's uh, a positive when you look into 
build on from last year and what are you looking to improve on? Build on, improve. I kind of think of those two as the same. Um, the things on defense, we got we got to we got to make sure that we create more havoc, and that's that's a must. If we're going to play an up tempo, get after it style system, which we are going to, we've got to make sure that we're creating havoc. Havoc, uh, you know, that's a must. Uh, offensively, you know, we had really good moments a year ago, consistency, and don't turn the ball over. You know, you take care of the football, and you're consistent on offense, and you're attacking on defense and getting the ball out and doing all those things, you got a chance every week, regardless of who the opponent is. And, uh, you know, so that's kind of an important piece, you know. I think of... You know, think, of a, think about the Army game. We've never beaten them in our history. Then all of a sudden, there's one interception in the end zone. Then you go down to the fourth quarter, and I don't even want to tell you, guys are laying all over the ground. We don't have any, virtually any corners left. We ended up playing one corner, one safety. And there's another interception, and the guy that played his first game of his career made a great block so we could get uh, McGill out to the 27 yard line. So, you know, those things are very important. So. We had talked about some of the newcomers in the wide receiver room. Um, Sterling Alba. Um, Coming was, along. Yeah, I think he flashed a little bit today. He, he, yeah, he sure did. You know what? You know what? I, I don't want to give away any scouting reports, but he can fly. He, he's a lot more, he's deceptively long speed. You know what I mean by long speed? Like, he'll put those strides on you, and he can separate. So, I think that group is going to be surprisingly good. I just don't want to put too much pressure on. But you're right. It's good. That's a good observation on your part, because I wasn't going there. You mentioned the portal. A couple guys reportedly went in. How does this adjust what you want to do? I can't worry about guys that went in. You know, uh, we t the portal taketh and the portal giveth and the port portal taketh away. And, uh, you know, we w I'm disappointed, you know, because you invest a lot of time in trying to get guys coached and get them to believe in what we're trying to get done. But you, it's happening all over the country. So you can't worry about it. You just move on. And, you know, the one good thing is you're allowed to replace uh, – and for, the, for those guys that leave, we're allowed one for one in the replacement scale. And uh, our track record so far, we've done pretty darn well, and I think we have five or six left. So. That offensive line, obviously, you said it's improved. Who stands out to you so far? Uh, the big fella, Luke from uh, Columbia. I think he's probably the guy that stands out the most. And. Uh, you know, you know who stands out to me the most? Josh Atwood. How about that? He's a, he's a guy that's been with us for a long time. He's playing much better. And Mottinger's playing much better. You know, the, those guys. You know, the other guys, Mao, you know, from Indiana, you know, he's a, he's a dude. I don't have a big enough, you know, portfolio yet to give you a great story. But uh, I like the way he works, you know, and I think he's going to fit right in with that group as well. And I assume that your decision on the spring game will, will be directly dependent upon how healthy you are. Yeah, I that. mean, you got to kind of just play that one by ear. I mean, we'll, we'll end up doing some live work. The question will be how, ma how much. Will it be the whole practice? Will it be just a portion of practice? Or will it be... Thunderstruck, which, you know, is a tempo period. And then, all right, we're going to go inside drill. And we're going to, so we work on the run game. And, uh, or is it just put the ball down, put the stakes down, get the refs in here and let's go. You know, maybe, I don't know, 70, 75, 80 snaps 
divided by three, that's about 30 each or 25, 26 each. So that gets you to 75, almost 80. I mean, you're right. You got you you can't you you can't take a take a a, a bunch of hurt guys and put them out there and expect them to uh, you know to go ahead and all of a sudden perform miracles. You gotta you gotta make sure. But if you're healthy, let's keep rolling. You know uh, I think that's important too. But no matter what, you're gonna control you're gonna control the workload at the end of the year, at the end of spring, for sure. Thanks, coach. That good? Okay, guys. Thank you.